Hello and welcome to Torsi Wildridge Kitchen Gardener. So I said I would give you guys an update on the grafted tomato plants that have actually grown really, really well this year. So my planting plan for my tomatoes that are behind me are, to the left of me are grafted, grafts above soil level. To the side of me here is grafts below soil level. These two rows are non-grafted, bar two grafted plants that I've put in because this side here is actually a hot spot or alternatively at the beginning of the season it can be extremely cold. So these two plants are actually new plants because the non-grafted that I stuck in because we had that frost that hit so late in May, they actually gave up the ghost. And a lot of these tomato plants, the non-grafted ones, suffered so badly through that cold period. It was cold and we had a lot of wind and it, it just got too cold in here. But it was amazing actually to see how well the grafted plants were battling through that. So not only are grafted plants great for more of a production of tomatoes, but also as well if you do have to plant your tomatoes out in slightly cooler temperatures or they're better with they better withstand those colder temperatures at the beginning of the year as proven by these two which were lately planted but the previous tomato plants that weren't grafted completely died on me so I'll take you through the rows now and show you the fruit production that we're getting off of the grafted versus non-grafted and we we'll take it from there. So this first row here is uh, Shirley which is a normal salad tomato. Obviously I can't compare these two with these two grafted tomato plants because obviously these were sown in April but they're doing really well so that maybe proves that if you are growing outside or in a polytunnel or a growing space that maybe a later sown tomato crop is better so they're not weakened by the cold weather you can you know they grow really quickly actually from this april sowing that i've done and obviously the abundance of fruit on these two grafted shirleys has been absolutely exceptional this year so you know here we've got here you know a lovely that is a good sized salad tomato and you know this truss here is just absolutely dripping that is absolutely fantastic that's almost show worthy tomatoes this crop here is miley so you get these absolutely beautiful plum orange tomatoes and there is definitely proof in the pudding when it comes to these. So obviously this is what the kind of growth that I had last year. Really, really spindly growth. Um, and that is terrible, you know, how it's meant to support these trusses. And the trusses aren't particularly big because obviously the plant isn't as strong as it should be. Whereas you've got the grafted one, which, you know, the stem stays lovely and thick all the way up to the top it actually gets thicker nearer to the middle I mean that's a fantastic size stem and the trusses are absolutely fantastic you know yet again that's show quality truss right there um, and then we've got a Shirley which is suffering that's actually a grafted one that's actually suffering really bad with magnesium so it'd be interesting to see how that gets on we have such bad lockups in the soil so you know grafted yet again if you've got issues with your soil it's definitely worth looking at i tried to grow this crop last year this is garden peach and it's actually a heritage variety and i'm not massive on growing heritage but uh, Le Manoir grew this and I just absolutely fell in love with it. It was absolutely amazing. It smells slightly peachy and it's just got this wonderful, furry, really diamond shiny skin to it. And it was a complete disaster last year. But I thought, do you know what, give it another go, graft it and see how well it 
comes on and it is doing really really well I'm just hope that I can get the flavour right to what it was and how I remember it tasting because that's what it's all about when you're growing your tomatoes it's about the flavour of the tomatoes this side I am growing these are all beef tomatoes and then halfway down I've got cookers towards the end and as you can see you know it's producing lovely sized tomatoes and these are also grafted as well there are a few that aren't grafted and yet again they haven't done particularly well not compared to the grafted tomatoes so it's yet again on the other side of the polytunnel proving to be well worth its weight in gold to graft so this is my own conclusion of Graphs versus non-graphs, graphs above the soil level and graphs below the soil level. So there is definitely a massive difference between grafted and non-grafted tomato plants. And from here on out, I will only be growing grafted tomato plants, especially because my tomatoes go in exactly the same place every single year. With non-grafted, I'd definitely say hold off and do a later sowing rather than an earlier sowing as you know I lost a couple of my tomato plants because it was too cold the grafted ones seemed to battle on through that they they did look a little bit unhappy to begin with but through their survival it shows that they're fit enough to survive or withstand the cold or have more of a cold tolerance I noticed as well that there wasn't so much leaf curl going on either so whereas the non-grafted were suffering quite badly with leaf curl which is a fluctuation in temperature from it going from cold to hot or hot to cold the uh, grafted didn't have that so there's another factor to bear in mind these guys are producing so much fruit and quite large sizes size of fruit which you know whether that's because of the conditions of the soil because the conditions of the soil aren't particularly great um, Definitely, you know, with the rootstocks, they're proving their weight in gold to doing that and spending that time to graft my tomato plants. All in all, I'm definitely, you know, grafted tomato plants are the, the way forward. For grass being above and below the soil, I can't really tell a difference between that. There might be some scientific reason. I did do a lot of research and they said make sure that the graft is above soil because obviously it will root the original plant that you're growing then roots into the soil but no difference in the quality of grafts above and below the soil level which I'd assume that you would have done if it was so important to make sure that graft was above the soil level. I'm kind of just thinking that it doesn't really matter if there was a massive difference then I would definitely be like make sure that graft is above the soil level but I can't really see a massive difference between these two crops so I'm a bit under the conclusion of it doesn't really matter if the graft's above or below the soil level um, please tell me otherwise if you think so but that is my personal thoughts on graphs above and below the soil Thanks guys for watching, I hope that there is some information out of this that you can take away and use for yourself. Don't forget I've also done the grafting video so if you do want to give grafting a go then check me out on that video and hopefully you guys will have as great a success as what I'm having this year growing your tomato plants.